Hey guys, brilliant. Uh, so hi everybody, salut tout le monde. Um, if nobody turns up today, si personne arrive aujourd'hui, that's no problem. If there's one person, I will quite happily do a translation with one person. S'il y a une personne, je suis content de faire une traduction avec une personne. Um, what I've discovered, ce que j'ai découvert, is that lots of you like to listen to this like a sort of radio show in the week without participating. C'est que beaucoup parmi vous, vous aimez écouter cette émission. Non, vous aimez, vous aimez écouter ce cours comme une émission pendant la semaine um, sans avoir participé, which is absolutely fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. Can I just remind those of you that if you hear something uh, about vocabulary, grammar, whatever it might be, that you have a question about, don't hesitate to contact me and ask for the appropriate videos. Donc, si vous entendez quelque chose, n'hésitez pas à me contacter pour uh, la bonne vidéo. Um, equally, can I remind those of you who are new to the live chat, whether you're listening to this now or later, that we do have a series of grammar podcasts, okay? Uh, J'ai une série de podcasts which covers all of French grammar from the beginning to the end of tenses. Tu vois, il s'agit de tout, uh, tous les temps, du début jusqu'à la fin, okay? There's my lovely Susie. Hello, Susie. Uh, so, Susie came yesterday to the Logic Language Learning Picnic. Donc, Susie, elle est venue hier. Elle a assisté à. She attended. Elle a assisté à. Um, the picnic d'hier. Um, she looked classy. She looked beautiful. And she spoke fantastic French. Donc, uh, elle était belle. Elle était classique. Et elle a bien parlé en français. So, um, anybody who's taking part, who wants to get some translation, so qui aimerait faire les traductions, can you just identify yourselves on here? So if you could just say, I want translation, and just type in the box, on the speech box here, or send me WhatsApp. So I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to do both. J'essaie de le rendre aussi facile que possible pour les deux. Okay, so tell me who wants some translation. I'm quite happy to give Susie a free hour if no one else turns up. Moi, je suis content de donner une heure gratuite, free. Free as in money is gratuite, libre is free time à Susie. Okay, so for enough, Philip, I've no idea what those letters mean, but this person wants to take place. So um, uh, the, the guy with the, or the lady with the F words, um, as you know, I like an F word. Um, uh, this person, do you want to take part? Can I remind you that my WhatsApp number is plus four four seven eight nine nine seven three two eight three eight. Okay. Those of you who genuinely don't have WhatsApp, okay, I would really appreciate it if you used it. Donc ceux qui vraiment vous n'avez pas le WhatsApp, I would be really happy if you could download it. Je serais très content. Si vous pourriez le télécharger, télécharger, it makes life easier. Ça rend la vie plus facile. Ça rend la vie plus facile. Um, uh, otherwise, for today, I don't mind you typing the translation, but I just don't want people googling the translation and sending it me. Je ne veux pas que des gens uh, regardent en ligne et qui me l'envoient, because that serves no purpose. Ça ne sert à rien. All right. So um, let's just get going. So I've got, uh, lovely, I've got Susie on here now. Okay, brilliant. So off we go then. So uh, if you want translation, you need to send me a WhatsApp. Susie, I've got your number already. So Susie, I would like, um, um, uh, right. So I'm going to try and give people educational translations. So that means I'm gonna teach a little theme and I want people to then try and do it. So with the word following, Okay, we've got suite a, okay, is following a noun. We've got suivant, suivante is following as an adjective. So the following week, la semaine suivante. And following that, as an expression, we've got ensuite. So we've got three types of following, all right? So I would like Susie to say, following our dinner at the restaurant, we went to a bar, which is masculine, okay, um, lovely, uh, we ate well, during which, so 
during the meal, you know, during the meal. Um, no, we ate well. Uh, the meal, it was great, during which I spoke lots of French. So that is Susie's. Following our dinner um, at the restaurant, sorry, we went to a bar, which is a masking word. We ate well. The meal, comma, it was great. So I want you to think about how we're going to do it. It was great there. During which I spoke lots of French. That's for Susie. Okay. If you'd like to uh, get, have any other translation, anybody else, do please send me a WhatsApp. Uh, if not, I will just continue to talk about the meal. And the other four of you who are here who are not doing translation are welcome to listen. So yesterday we had our logic language learning picnic. Yeah, c'était notre picnic de logic language learning. Um, uh, the group was fantastic. Le groupe était fantastique. Uh, everybody was prepared to speak in both languages. Tout le monde était prêt à parler en anglais en français. And everybody got on well. Tout le monde s'entendait très bien. The verb to get on well, s'entendre. Um, uh, it was interesting to hear people's individual stories. C'était intéressant d'entendre les histoires individuelles des gens. Um, and uh, it's always, what's very clear to me is there's no such thing as, you know, better or worse in French. It's just how far down the line you come. A lot of the people are clearly very capable from the beginning. Uh, pour moi, il n'y a pas... Y, y, Il a pas de, de pire, de mieux, um, uh, de meilleur, de pire, with a noun. Um, I'm sidetracking, but about worse. If you use worse with a noun, you use meilleur. If you use worse with an adjective, as an adverb, you're going to use um, mieux. So that was really interesting. So um, could the guy with the F name, I don't know how, to, what's your name? I can't say F-H-D-N-U-F, Fudnuff. I can't call you Fudnuff. Je peux pas Fudnuff. What, what's your name? I'm really sorry. If that's your name from your... Net your nationality. I'm really. I'm sorry. I'm not criticizing your your ethnicity, but it just seems like a nickname. Ça paraît un surnom, un surnom. What is that? Your real name? Est-ce que ça c'est ton vrai nom? Um, yeah. Anybody else who wants a translation, please get in touch. I haven't had any other. Well, I haven't had any WhatsApps back yet. Susie, when you send to WhatsApp. Um, tell me on here so I'll know if WhatsApp's running late. Quand tu as envoyé un WhatsApp, dis-moi ici pour que je sache, so that I know, pour que je sache que WhatsApp est en retard. So, uh, uh, one second. Lovely. Okay. So if you could just, um, so Susie's still working, that's absolutely fine. So there's, uh, there's six of the people here, other than Susie. Um, live, live, that's brilliant. So live, all right? So live, I don't want you to use Google. I don't want you to use Google, live. This is why I like people sending me a WhatsApp, because I, they send me an oral file. So if you could maybe download WhatsApp quickly, si tu pourrais télécharger WhatsApp très vite, that would be fantastic. If not, if you can try speaking back to me. So live. Um, what level is your French? Tu as un français de quel niveau? Other people don't just sit there. I can't stand people that just want to sit there in silence. You will be dead. You will be buried and in the ground before you learn French. Participate. Come on. Um, so um, do not be afraid. I will give you a translation at your level. N'ayez pas peur. Je vous donnerai une traduction à votre niveau. All right. So please say hi. Ideally on WhatsApp, but just on here. Tell me and I'll give you a translation. Right, so this is somebody saying hi. Hi, Luke, I'd like to join in if that's okay. I don't have your name. I can tell you were under 21 because you don't give me your name. Nobody young ever remembers to give me your name. So uh, there's a very uh, handsome chap who sent me a photograph. Uh, um, who is this? I've just finished GCC and I don't want to get rusty before A-level. What's this guy's name? He's got very cool hair. Right, Liv is a beginner. Um, so, oh, it's Gabriel that I know, my friend. Right, Gabriel's spoken before. 
Look at that amazing hair, everybody. Hide the number, that's private. I think I might have to have my hair done like that. I think that looks amazing. Right, so Gabriel, you'll post GCC and Liv, you'll begin it. So Liv, I would like, my name is Liv. Okay, I am here for the first time. Luke is happy because yesterday he is. Oh, David, you speak. So David is going to prepare to talk about Gabriel, but he's not prepared to join in. Gabriel, you are my fluffer. You're going to get everybody going, which is good. So Liv, my name is Liv. I'm here for the first time. Luke is happy because yesterday he saw lots of friends. Have a go, Liv. Type it out. Now, Liv, if you don't know how to write, si tu ne sais pas écrire, type out phonetically what you want. All right, let's have a go. So I'd like you to use WhatsApp ideally, but if you haven't got the time to download it, si tu n'as pas le temps de le télécharger, that doesn't, that's not a problem. Ce n'est pas un problème, ce n'est pas problématique. There you go. David, I would like you to say, I've got some work for you, because you can speak. David, what level, what's your level, David? What's your level? Um, uh, Gabe, you've got, after seeing his friends yesterday and before seeing them at Christmas, although I shall see Susie before then, I'm convinced. Uh, I just mean in the group situation. Um, Luke is going to... Uh, 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 help them with their translation. Uh, yeah. Lovely. David, don't say malheureusement. No one is a beginner. They just literally, they haven't got as far in the process. I know that sounds stupid. You're not as a national, you're not as an identity poor at French. You just haven't done the work. You'll be absolutely fine. David. So David, I would like. David likes the photograph of Gabriel, he has said something nice. Do not Google, try your honest best, all right? Oh, well, David, your level's already great. Je suis en train d'apprendre le français. David, could you manage a cheeky WhatsApp? Est-ce que tu pourrais m'envoyer un WhatsApp? Yeah. Um, yes, so David, can you please send me WhatsApp to this number? Sarah as well, send me a WhatsApp, guys, privately, and I will, then I, I, so what happens is I then give you something to translate and you give me the voice file, you just press the button and you speak, all right? No, David, send me a WhatsApp, all right? Um, right, send me a WhatsApp to the number that has come up here. Can you see the, yeah? Right, so we've got Susie's. So, Susie's work was, Uh, following our dinner at the restaurant, we went to a bar. We ate well. The meal, it was great, during which I spoke lots of French. It is the voice of a radio presenter. It is the clearest, most beautiful voice, Susie's voice. Lovely. So that was all linked up and it was lovely, Susie. So you said, suivant notre dîner au restaurant, it was so French. It was so linked up. It was lovely. Can I remind you, it's really annoying, but following a noun is going to be sweet a. Ah. So guys, if you had following the meal, following our meal, sweet au repas, sweet a notre repas. So if you've got a the coming in, a will become o, a u x. O, A, U, X, or at la if it's feminine. So it's one of those expressions. So, for example, following the um, class, sweet O, core. So meal, dinner is masculine, sweet O, dîner. So instead of, um, but the, the pronunciation is brilliant, Susie. So O, restaurant, lovely. Great. So can I remind you, if it's the following meal will be in a different restaurant, le repas suivant. So in other words, adjective following suivant, which is probably the one you're going to hear the most, qui est probablement la traduction que vous allez entendre le plus souvent. But the word which is following before a noun is... Um, what, what do I mean before a noun? 
the following meal is coming before a noun. What I mean is if you're saying, following the meal, we did this. Following this, so if you're using it as a time expression, following my dance career, I became a French teacher. You know, suite à ma carrière de danseur. Okay, so that's sweet. Yeah, like a sweet. Okay, lovely. So lovely. So that would be sweet au dîner. It's easy rather than which no one remembers. So sweet au dîner. Lovely. Lovely. Nous sommes allés um, dans un bar. Nous sommes allés à un bar. Now everybody likes o. Oh. Guys, can I remind you, o or à la or o is not to just to the, it's at the. So a lot of English people, English speakers, love to say don le all the while. Use à la or o a lot more. In the pharmacy, à la pharmacy. In the restaurant, au restaurant, as Susie just correctly did. Because we like to use at the more in French, okay? We're going to the bar, nous allons au bar. Same thing, okay? So we went to a bar, nous sommes allés au bar. We ate well. Nous avons mangé bien is what I got of Susie. Nice nasality. Just remember, guys, your mouth is going to be used to nous avons mangé bien because you're used to putting bien at the end. But adverbs go up to verb number one. So we ate well. Nous avons bien mangé. I understood. J'ai compris. I didn't understand. Je n'ai pas compris. So the main adverb will go after verb number one. If you've got a past tense, that means it's going to come after, you know, um, the first word. So j'ai, um, uh, I, I've spoken, j'ai parlé, I've spoken well, j'ai bien parlé, okay? Uh, so nous avons bien mangé, the meal, it was great. Lovely, lovely, lovely from Susie. Perfect. Le repas, c'était fantastique. So we use Sete, and whether or not you knew that, Susie, or whether or not your just instinct went to it, who cares? My goal is for it all to be your instinct. So there's a video, guys, if you want that, please email me, logic language learning email at gmail.com. There's a video on the difference between ile and se. If you're talking about a noun, you will use, um, you know, um, uh, ile. So, sorry, you will use se. If you're talking about an adjective, you use il. But if you're making a comment, um, it was great. C'était fantastique. So, um, uh, le repas, c'était fantastique, during which I spoke lots of French. During lequel, pendant lequel. What an absolutely brilliant relative pronoun, Susie. Skillful. Skillful, no problem. During which um, uh, I spoke lots of French. So you try to say, I spoke French a lot, j'ai beaucoup parlé. And interestingly, you put beaucoup in the right place there. Whereas when you said, nous avons beaucoup, because you're less used to doing it with nous, but you're very comfortable using je. So that's a lesson to all of us. Ça, c'est un leçon pour tout le monde. Um, um, notice that we're much more familiar, on est beaucoup plus familier to speak with the first person. Yeah, parler en première personne. So when you can't say something in French, quand tu ne peux pas dire quelque chose en français, how would you say it with je? So Susie just seamlessly, without even worrying about it, sans, sans y avoir pensé, sans y avoir pensé, without thinking about it, just went, j'ai beaucoup parlé. Yeah, so remember, I've spoken a lot, j'ai beaucoup parlé, I've spoken a lot of French. I spoke a lot in French, j'ai beaucoup parlé en français. I spoke a lot of French, j'ai parlé beaucoup de français. That's using beaucoup with the noun. Good, Susie. So it would be in total, I understood everything you said, j'ai compris tout ce que tu as dit. A French person, any French person would have completely understood everything. But just to make it completely right, we've got suite au dîner au restaurant. Nous sommes allés, on est allés au bar. Sorry, à un bar, to a bar, à un bar, à un bar. Uh, we ate well, on a, bien, on a bien mangé, nous avons bien mangé. The meal, le repas, c'était fantastique. During which, pendant lequel, I spoke lots of French, j'ai parlé beaucoup de français. Good. Uh, David, um, brilliant. David, excellent. Lovely to hear from you. So, uh, David, I've given you something to translate. Have I had that um, from you? Let's just go right back down. Uh, lovely. David, right, David. So basically, uh, do you have WhatsApp, David? My question is, do you have WhatsApp? Um, oh, hey, brilliant. I've got it. Right. David, great. So can you, can you, um, can you just say, could you hold the, the WhatsApp? Where are we? 
Can you hold the WhatsApp? I can't make it visual, visual, visual. Can you hold the WhatsApp button down? Hi, Mike. Can you, um, can you, on the bottom of WhatsApp, on the bottom of the screen, there's a, there's a microphone. Okay, yeah, micro. Can you press the green microphone, David? Are you Spanish? If you need me to say this in Spanish, just tell me. Um, uh, you press the microphone down and you give me your answer. So can you give me a, a vocal file? Est-ce que tu peux me donner un fichier vocal? All right, lovely. So, um, hi, David, I need you to speak to me here. Salut, David, j'ai besoin que tu me parles ici. All right, so that's what you're sending me. Great, let's look at Gabriel. Susie, while we're doing this, your next one would be, um, everybody enjoyed themselves. I'd like to remind Susie and everybody that the verb to enjoy is a reflexive verb, which is semi-zip, okay? Everybody enjoyed themselves a lot. Um, okay? Um, everybody used to enjoy themselves a lot. It's a bit of a grammar one. So that's for Sue. Here you go. So everybody enjoy themselves. Everybody enjoy themselves a lot. Think what we're inserting and where we're inserting it. Everybody used to enjoy themselves. Yeah, okay. Off you go. Um, lovely. So Gabriel, let's have a listen. Of course you can, Mike. So Mike's got, um, I just arrived. Luke uh, loves that Mike has a family. But uh, unfortunately, Mike was not able to come yesterday. Susie Mike is very much a member of the sort of group that happened yesterday, but he uh, was with family stuff. So um, uh, lovely. So that's for Mike. Yep. Good. So send me that as a voice file, Mike. That'll be brilliant. Uh, um, good. Um, great. So Gabriel has sent me. After seeing his friends yesterday and before seeing them at Christmas, Luke is going to help them with their translation. Good. There's a lot of good stuff here, Gabriel. There's a lot of good stuff. You have beaucoup de bon travail, but a lot of faults. No, a few, not a lot. And a lovely voice, une belle voix. Hi, Maguire. I don't know who you are, but if you want to join and you want to do some translation, can you WhatsApp me on this number? Good. So. So after seeing his friends yesterday, après avoir vu ses amis hier, David said après avoir vu. That's fine. I personally am more of a linker. I think après avoir vu is more common. There are times in French you link more or link less, regardless of your accent. À mon avis, après avoir vu is more common. Après avoir vu, après avoir vu. Okay? And before seeing them at Christmas. So what I'm liking is you gave me avant de les vu. So avant, correct. De, correct. Les, correct pronoun, because it's before seeing them. But what is the methodology, Gabriel? Après avoir passed word, avant de infinitive. Après avoir passed word, avant, uh, 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 you know, participle, avant de infinitive. So before seeing would be avant de voir, before seeing them, avant de les voir. All right? So well done on the word order, but it, with the future one, avant de, think about it, guys. Whenever you use a de, there's an infinitive, if infinitive coming next. Um, I was happy to see Susie. J'étais content de voir Susie. I was happy to see her. J'étais content de la voir. Okay? So I'd like you to go again with that bit. Um, uh, excellent. Uh, and Maguire, um, acheté, what is your real name? Tu t'appelles comment? Pour que je sache. Parce que... Enfin, si tu veux que je t'appelle Maguire, acheté, je suis bien content de le faire, mais uh, tu vois, ce serait quand même uh, plus, plus, plus sympa de savoir comment tu t'appelles. Um, lovely. So, uh, great. So, if we basically said, uh, lovely, brilliant. Okay. And for the Anglophones here, I'm going to call you Elliot. In a nice, nice British way. Uh, because you're clearly uh, bilingual. So, um, lovely. So, what that means then, um, 
is Gabriel, is that automatically before doing something, avant plus de plus infinitive. Yeah. Um, uh, Luke is going to help them. Lovely. So Luke va les aider. Well done. If you look to the dictionary, okay, si tu regardes les dico, the phrase for to help someone is aider quelqu'un à faire quelque chose. So you don't have le. So that's the big pisser in French, isn't it? Deciding if it's le, la, les, or lui, or le, if it's direct or indirect. All right? Um, so Luke's going to help them. So two things for you, Gabriel. First things first, avant, three things, avant, de, plus infinitive. Next thing, do not stress your academic working out. Ne le stresse pas. Don't show me. Ne me montre pas. I don't need to see what you're thinking. J'ai pas besoin de voir ce que tu penses. Because you're showing me, j'ai pas besoin de les voir. And your voice is giving me that. Okay? I don't want it underlined. Yeah? Yeah, pas souligné. Okay? So, in other words, say for me, je suis content de les voir. Alors, après l'avoir mangé, après l'avoir mangé. You're not going to say après l'avoir. You know, don't stress the pronoun. Never stress an auxiliary, never stress a pronoun. Don't say vous avez vu. When you're a beginner, quand tu es débutant, I can really understand, je peux bien comprendre, because people are trying to learn the conjugations. Des gens, ils essayent d'apprendre les conjugations. I more than understand. Je comprends. Okay? You don't vous avez, but don't do that in a class situation. Say a normal sentence, Gabe. All right? So, Gabe, could you, your, your whole one from the beginning was, uh, so Luke's, so after arriving, uh, what is it? Uh, after seeing his friends yesterday, après, après avoir vu ses amis hier et avant de les voir Noël, Luke va les aider, Luke va les aider uh, avec leur traduction. Lovely. This is another one for Gabe. Okay. Um, uh, Luke is happy that I that, that, that we have uh, made some progress with his level of French. No, with Gabe's level of French. Gabriel. Um, okay. Um, uh, his French has improved. He improved his French. That's for Gabriel. All right? Anybody else that wants something to translate, please send me a WhatsApp or say hello on the thing. Si quelqu'un veut une traduction... Uh... Right, this is David's one. So let me find David. Okay, David, so just very quickly to correct what you've given me. I understand you, okay? Te entiende cuando me hablas, así que me puedes hablar en español, pero porque soy también profesor de castellano, pero para mí, okay, para corregirte, okay, so you've got, David, por in Spanish, por, 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 okay? Tu, tu, so O, oh, you guys, if there's an O and a U, yeah, O will be, the pronunciation, David, is U, so it's not por, so you said merci beaucoup pour, okay, that's Spanish, pour, but a nice voice, a nice voice, okay? If there's a U, 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 so you've got U and U, so vous avez vu, okay? We need those two sounds, and if you can do that, David, because you clearly, clearly are good at languages, if you can do that, perfect, and that's a lot more than most Spanish speakers of French, a lot more. All right, so I'm going to give you on purpose, David, something I want you to say. Okay, so I don't want you to translate. Okay, yeah, 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 no tienes que traducir. Yeah, only, only to imitate. Okay, solo es para imitar. Okay, so, um, uh, um, Okay. Um, okay. Uh, lovely. That'll do for now. 
uh, just quickly for David before we do something else. So what I want to hear, David, is I want to hear when there's an O U, I want to hear O, and when there's an U, I want to hear U. So vous avez vu tous les garçons tu as coupé le papier. J'ai regardé mon ami. And I also want to hear the R, okay? And then if you could, because I want to hear the difference between this this word um, uh, uh, re and r. I need to hear those two sounds, okay? Because the Spanish E, like the English E, falls in the middle. Yeah? Al centro. So you've kind of got E. Okay? So I'd like you to say for me, David, Vous avez vu tous les garçons. Tu as coupé le papier. Slow it down. Tu as coupé le papier. J'ai regardé mon ami. Okay? Je uh, 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 Elliot is apologizing. There's no need to apologize. Yes, David, I'd like you to send me that now. All right? And then I'm going to give you some translation. I did give you some translation, David, but I don't think you saw. Okay, lovely. We've got one from Susie. Así que, David, uh, entiendes lo que, lo que quiero es que tienes que repetir lo que acabo, acabo de escribirte. Okay? En la página, aquí, así vas a decírmelo. You're going to, pero con WhatsApp. You're going to say it on WhatsApp, all right? Right, so, Susie was given a fucker, a fucker of a word to do. So let me basically explain. Tout le monde, grammatically, can we all see? David would say the same thing about todo el mundo. It's, it's, a, it's a, a singular, it's a singular thing. So in other words, tout le monde, grammatically, the word for everybody, is not a they, is not a they, it is like a he. So in other words, if you say, uh, they arrived, we're going to use the masculine, ils sont arrivés, if we're talking about men, yeah, or women, elles sont arrivés, we're going to do that, all right? Everybody, troisième personne singulière, it, it, okay, it's, it's third person uh, singular. So in other words, it works like a he. So if you said he got washed, so can I remind you how we do the poetry, Susie, so je me suis, tu t'es, il s'est, not il se, guys. Il se is the present tense or any tense without an auxiliary. Yeah? Because there are five from composé, there's five tenses without, well, mood, subjunctive is a mood, but there's five without. So basically, if you're talking, if you're talking reflexive, there's, forget the passé simple. Forget the passé simple for a moment. Okay, let's include the passé simple. So basically, if you said, here's five, here's, here's, let's say the verb, um, he, he washes himself. Here's the five without an auxiliary. Il se parle, il se parle, il, sorry, he speaks himself. Il, he washes himself. Il se lave, il se lavera, il se laverait, il se sera lavé, il se serait lavé. Um, subjunctive, il se lava. Uh, sorry, sorry um, passé simple, il se lava. So basically, you've got plenty of versions in French six possibilities that you possibly use. I mean, the passive sample is not very common already, really. But as a minimum five that you would use regularly that are just going to be e -se. When you start using tenses that have an auxiliary in them, so j'ai mangé, j'avais mangé, j'aurais mangé, you know, all of those businesses, when you use the, the verb reflexively, you're going to put the verb to be in there. So in other words, I got washed, je me suis lavé. I had got washed, je m'étais lavé. I would have got washed, je me serais lavé. You know, Luke's happy that I got washed. Luke est content que je me sois lavé. So the point is, il se is really common. Il s'est. So the most common thing we're saying is, if you are in the passé composé and you are using a reflexive verb, yeah, a reflexive verb, you are going to use je me suis, tu t'es, il s'est, plus the past. So the verb Susie is s'amuser. So, he enjoyed himself, il s'est amusé. Everybody enjoyed them, um, um, what, what are you saying? Uh, tout le monde, everybody enjoyed themselves, tout le monde s'est amusé. Yeah? Uncle Luke, no, the adverbs go after verb number one. So, say for me, j'ai mangé, j'ai bien mangé. Je suis parti, je suis déjà parti. Je me suis lavé. 
je me suis bien lavé. Je me suis déjà lavé. Je ne, je ne me suis jamais lavé. The main, the main, forget no, don't worry about the no. The main adverb is going to go after verb number one. All right? So automatically, guys, if you're speaking the reflexive with the reflexive verb and you're going in the past, the verb, the first verb, je me suis, tu t'es, il sait, nous nous sommes, vous vous êtes, il se sent. Good? So Susie's one was about identifying which tense was the past. So everybody enjoy themselves. Tout le monde s'est amusé. Everybody, tout le monde s'est amusé. With the link, tout le monde s'est amusé. Everybody enjoyed themselves a lot. Tout le monde s'est bien amusé. We tend to say, you can say beaucoup amusé. Yeah. Tout le monde s'est beaucoup. I like tout le monde s'est bien amusé. Everybody used to. Used to is just a was. The imperfect. If you hear used to, Suze, you are in the was tense. So if I gave you he eats, il mange. If I gave you he was eating, il mangeait. He was talking, il parlait. He was talking to himself, il se parlait. No auxiliary, il se parlait. Everybody was enjoying themselves. Tout le monde s'amusait. Yeah, so it's the uh, tout le monde s'amusait. It's just the imperfect. So Susie, I'd just like you to say for me on file, tout le monde s'est amusé. Tout le monde s'est bien amusé. Tout le monde s'amuse. That's what I'd like you to say for me, Susie. As soon as you've sent me that, I'll send you something else. Lovely. Lovely. So this is from uh, David. Good, David. That's not bad at all. J'ai regardé. So just try and keep all attached. All attached. So you shouldn't have to go, je regarde. So it's nice that you use the breath. Yeah, okay. But don't feel you need to use breath in a, like a car. Gentle acceleration. So don't go, je regarde, out of nowhere. By all means, yeah, yeah. It's, so the Spanish, the, the French R is about the air. Yeah, it's less here than the Spanish R. It's more on the top of the mouth, okay? So if you've got like, Perro, yeah, okay, yeah, aburrido, okay, you've got a going on, okay, Spanish here, Italian here, French are here, but don't hit me, don't hit me, David, okay, so just say, um, uh, j'ai regardé, so you can have a, but the same air, j'ai regardé, no, j'ai regardé, I don't need that, good, so this is for you, David, Luke is happy, that I can speak French. He likes my Spanish accent. If you want me to give you the, tell me, David, if you want me to write your translation in Spanish for you to then write it in French, I'm more than happy. Like, but but I think this is, c'est vrai will be masculine. Yeah, I think c'est vrai will be masculine. Okay. Uh, so I know you said es verdad, but basically c'est vrai will be masculine. Yeah, because when you say, you use masculine adjective. C'est vrai, okay? So, David, I think you're here to practice your English as well as your French, okay? Estás aquí para practicar tu inglés as well, all right? So, I'm going to give you the translation in English. If you want the translation in Spanish to then translate into French, you tell me your priority, okay? So, you tell me. But I would like you now to send me a file with Luke is happy that I can speak French. He likes my Spanish accent, okay? Good. Let's see what else is going on from other people. Gabriel, Luke is happy that we've made Mike. I've seen you've sent me. J'ai vu que tu m'as envoyé ton message. I'll be as quick as I possibly can. Okay, je le ferai aussi aussitôt que possible. Um, Luke is happy that we've made some progress with Gabriel's level of French. His French has improved. He improved his French. Lovely. Now, we've had Luke est content quand, and then we had a panic. We had a panic because my little friend Gabriel completely remembered that happiness, as David will tell you in Spanish, happiness means subjunctive when there is a that. Yeah? When there is a that. All right? So Luke is happy that we have made. Gabriel, can I remind you, do not panic about the subjunctive when we go in the past. All we've got to do, David, Gabriel, is use the first verb. Why is the past subject? Why is the past subjunctive endlessly fucking easier than the present subjunctive? Because there are only two verbs. There is the verb. There is the verb to be, and there's the verb have. You are pop, popping your 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 auxiliary verb in the subjunctive. So if I said Susie has eaten, Susie a mangé. Ah ah ah. 
If I said I'm thrilled that Susie has eaten, je suis ravi que Susie ait mangé. But you wouldn't stress that, like I told you earlier, you do not stress auxiliaries. Moi, je suis content que Susie ait mangé. Lovely. People will drop the subjunctive, people will forget the subjunctive, but that is formally what happens, all right? Emotion. So in other words, David, if you've got, uh, Gabriel, if you've got, we have made, nous avons fait, we're just going into the subjunctive. Can I remind you guys that the subjunctive verbs for the bit have and be are a, 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 or a, 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 about the letter a for the subjunctive have, and soit, 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 soyons, soyez, soit for the subjunctive to be, all right? So for example, Luke left, Luke est parti, I'm thrilled that Luke left, most people normally are, I'm a very loud presence. Je suis content que Luke soit parti. All right? So I would like you to bear that in mind, uh, Gabriel, when I give you your next one. But I'm just going to correct what you've given me. So Luke is happy that we have made some progress. So Luke est content que nous ayons fait, ou en effet, du progrès. Um, good. So Gabriel, you are going to do well in French. You are a muscle memory person. But you said nouveau, because which word have you said more often in French? Nouveau or niveau? Niveau, the level. You've said nouveau. So be aware of this. Michael, who is present here, is a very muscle. A lot of men don't have muscle memory. Mike is a very good muscle memory person. So what it basically means is feed your muscle memory. Feed that bitch. Feed it. Give it the words you need. Keep saying new words. Niveau, niveau, niveau. Le niveau. Mon niveau. Yeah, get it in your mouth so that your mouth doesn't feel that that feels weird. Muscle memory is twice as effective and 10 times as pleasant to use than grammar brain when speaking. All right? So, mon niveau de français, uh, sorry, son, son niveau de français, or le niveau de français de Gabriel, lovely. Nice balance about not stressing the dumb, that was all lovely. His French has improved. Ah, but, sa français, Gabriel, sa, sa. The word français, if I said he's French, il est français. If I said she's French, elle est française. Français, does that sound male or female? Sans français. Get it in your mouth. Don't go, oh, it's a masculine word. Languages are feminine. La langue française. The word French, le français. Don't think that. Just say it. Le français, mon français. Get it in your mouth. Get it in your mouth, all right? His French has improved. Um... Good. So Gabriel has understood the fundamental point here, which is some verbs are reflexive when talking about themselves. So if I said his French has improved, it needs to be his French has improved itself. Has his French improved world hunger? Has his French improved his sex life? Possibly. Has his French um, improved... Um, uh, um, I've just realized Gabriel might be, not be a legal, uh, might be a legal minor. Full apologies. Um, uh, no, you're of age, because if you're doing A-levels, you'll have turned 17. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, so in other words, um, my French has improved. Mon français s'est amélioré, amé, 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 amélioré. Uh, as opposed to my French has improved. No, I haven't. He has improved his French. Il a amélioré son français. So it's about this reflexive business and or doing it actively. Yeah, all right. So that's really useful. So Gabe, could you just say that one all back to me? Send it back to me. I want to hear. So, Luc est content que nous, a, nous ayons fait, ou Luc est content qu'on ait fait du progrès, ou que, que nous avons progressé, sorry, que nous ayons progressé. Uh, oh, je suis content d'avoir fait du progrès. I mean, you could avoid the subjunctive, but I didn't really want you to for grammar. Um, uh, whatever, uh, son français s'est amélioré, uh, il a amélioré son français. So, if you just could give it all back to me, David. And when you've sent it back to me, your next one will be, um, uh, before um, uh, speaking to them, um, they, um, it's important that we show them them, referring to photos. Whatever, that's for Gabriel, all right? Lovely, 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 lovely. Is anybody else waiting for anything? Mike, I've got Mike straight away, sorry. But obviously, guys, even if it's not your turn, please do pay attention. <laughs> Merci de faire attention. The advice I give, les conseils que je vous donne, I imagine that it's useful for everybody. J'imagine que c'est utile pour tout le monde. Enfin, j'espère. Parce que sinon, c'est une perte de temps totale. Et il y a d'autres choses que je pourrais faire avec ma vie. Um, 
I'm blessed. This is commitment. This is commitment to language learning. Mike is at Gatwick Airport. Lovely. So Mike, that was largely correct. So Mike has remembered the subjunctive. Luke is happy that Mike has. So it's Luke est content que Luke, Mike est, Luke est content que Mike a. So Mike has remembered our subjunctive have. Mike, remember, so you've said Luke, Mike's arrived. So Mike est arrivé, être verb. But Mike, remember, we've also got the je viens de. Yeah. So this is what I was saying to Susie and recently just to Gabriel. Muscle memory is the bad boy. Muscle memory is what you want. So in other words, if I gave Mike, I've just eaten, I guarantee you, je peux vous garantir tout le monde that Mike, he would say, qu'il dirait, je viens de manger. But because I'm giving him a Mike, I'm giving him another word doing the just, he thinks, oh, Mike has arrived. So this is called templating. Yeah. So think of what the je will do and then do it for the people. So I've just arrived, je viens d'arriver. I, I come from arriving. Or for you, David, like, acabo de hacer algo. So in, for example, I've just eaten, you know, acabo de comerme algo, you know, je viens de manger, I come from, yeah, in, in David it would be like, vengo de comer, you know, okay. So, uh, in other words, so Susie's just understood, Susie vient de comprendre, je viens de comprendre, okay? So, lovely, Mike, so that's all good, just remember, être uh, arrive, so je viens, um, sorry, je suis arrivé or je viens d'arriver, well done on the subjunctive, bravo avec le subjunctive. Lovely. So Mike hasn't been able to come. Mike n'a pas pu venir hier. Perfect French. Mike n'a pas pu. Or il a pas pu, if you wanted to drop the no. Mike wasn't able to come. Mike ne pouvait pas venir. So it's up to you whether you are referring to that action as a, a change taking place, a passé composé, you know, like, uh, oh, malheureusement hier, j'ai pas pu venir. I wasn't able to come in one go. I haven't been able to come, in other words, versus I couldn't come, versus je ne pouvais pas venir. Yeah, throughout the process, yeah? So that's, that's the difference between the passé composé and the imparfait. One is a description and one is a, a referring to an action that did or did not get completed. So in other words, guys, if those of you that are listening are interested in the difference between passé composé and imparfait, send me a freaking email saying, hi, Luke, big kiss, just put three versus two, imparfait versus passé composé, and I will send you the appropriate videos. Or I will recommend the podcasts that I will be honest are fucking brilliant that talk about this. So quick example, Susie understood. When I told Susie why I do what I do, she understood. An action took place. Elle a compris. When she was a little girl, Susie understood. Susie understood or Susie didn't understand where babies came from. So in English, it's still one word, but that would be the imperfect. Elle ne comprenait pas. So, for example, I went, okay, I spoke with my grandmother yesterday. J'ai parlé avec ma grand-mère hier. Hier, j'ai parlé avec la manu, okay? Yesterday, when I was little, I spoke with my grandmother um, in French or something. Quand j'étais petit, je, je lui parlais, je parlais avec ma grand-mère en français. So, that would be the imperfect. Je parlais avec ma grand-mère. So, in other words, I and then one word in English could be three or two. And Mike is very good at judging this. Good, Mike. That was good. Bearing in mind you're in an airport. I thought that was fucking brilliant. <laughs> French word for airport is not l'airport. You've got l'aéroport. You've got the, the double vowel in there. All right. So this one's for Mike to carry on with. Um, um, uh, I would like to know if you are near to the duty free. Um, I love smelling the perfume. Es verdad, David, porque eres español, pero lo, lo siento. Por... Okay, David, I understand, and I, it's great that you're foreign. I will try and slow it down, but I just have five, six people's content. Okay, I know you're using the class to try and improve your English. Okay, 
Yeah, entiendo que usas la clase para mejorar tu inglés, pero es que también tengo una lista enorme de puta madre de, 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 de gente que ya me han enviado su, me, ya me han enviado su, su, su respuesta. Uh, así que tengo que, um, um, sí, hacer un esfuerzo, lo siento. Ok, so, but I'll do my best, David. I will try and slow it down or I will try and be a little bit clearer, but I have got a lot of people. All right, so Susie. Good, Susie. Tout le monde s'est amusé. Just remember, tout le monde, or key, or there were nobody, personne, bits of grammar are like a he. He got washed, il s'est lavé. Everybody got washed, tout le monde s'est lavé. Just swap the word il for a tout. Good. Good. Perfect, Susie. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Good. Next up for Susie. Yesterday, Susie wore uh, a great bracelet. It suited her. Now, you will notice that both of those words in the past are single words in English. When one hears a single word in English, like I've just said, como acabo de deciros, okay? You need to be careful, okay? Se tiene que prestar atención. Because, tener cuidado. Because you've got, um, you've got, uh, you've got a situation where we could go to, to, you could go two or you could go three. Luke can count. So, in other words, If I told you, Susie, that the verb to wear is party and to suit somebody with uh, suit is convenir a quelqu'un for time. So, yes, that suits me. Four o'clock, Susie. I'll see you there. We'll go to Peter Chan Nurseries. Ça me convient. Um, blue suits me because it matches the bags under my eyes. Ça me va. So, convenir for time and aller. Um, uh, aller. A quelqu'un, in a weird way, you wouldn't really say, you know, is suit with clothes. So I would like Susie to have a thing, it's a bit complicated, but I'd like Susie to think, Susie wore, and I'd like you to do the first sentence, I'd like you to say everything in the passé composé. So you're going to put war in a, with an auxiliary, and you're going to put it suited her, use ça for it, ça, and you're going to put convenir in the past, have a go, it's a bit tricky. Then I want you to put it, both of those in the was. And then I want you to think, what is your final answer? Yeah, so which one would you want? So in other words, let's do this stage by stage, stage Susie. So first things first, before we debate which is correct, I'd like you to put porte in the passive composer in that sentence. Susie wore a great bracelet. And I'd like you to put it suited her. No, 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 I apologize. Not convenient. We're using alley. Using alley for, um, for suiting somebody. Okay. Um, so ça, then the verb alley. Notice it's ale a quelqu'un, so think what that's going to be for the her. And just have a little play for me, Susie. Yeah, have a little play. Or talk about what you're thinking about. If you don't do a complete sentence, talk about what you're thinking. Okay, this is very important. Good. Good. So Luke... Et heureux. Now, David, nice. I can really hear that you are trying with the vowels. Okay? Yeah. Llego a oír que haces un esfuerzo con las vocales. It's difficult for me to do three. I'm used to, estoy acostumbrado a hablar, a pasar entre francés y español, o inglés y español, pero, por ejemplo, entre, entre todos los tres. <laughs> es un poquito difícil, pero lo siento. Okay, so, yeah. Um, so, you're making an effort. I want, I don't want to hear space between the words. Okay, no quiero oír espacio entre las palabras. Okay, so Luc est heureux. Don't not Luc est heureux. So the accent was fantastic. Acento, te trato de usted. Tu acento perfecto, fantástico, pero Luc est heureux. Not Luc est heureux. All right, but good. In Spanish, David. Okay. Okay, estoy contento que hagas que tengas, ok, se usa el subjuntivo, así que vas a hacer la misma cosa en español, you're going to do this in, in, in francés, you're going to do the same thing in French, 
David, if you use an emotion, this is why it's interesting teaching Spanish people because you do have the subjunctive in Spanish. So in other words, guys, like we said earlier with Gabe, this happy looks that someone's making progress. I'm happy that, or Luke is happy that, that's going to bring on the subjunctive. So Luke is happy that David can. Luke est content que David. What's the subjunctive of peu? Now, if you just don't know the conjugation yet, David, fine, say it normally. Yeah, say it normally. Don't worry about the subjunctive. But it's just to tell you that like in Spanish, guys, that would be subjunctive. So have a little think about that, David. Um, have a little think. Um, so, il aime bien, no, elle, il aime bien. Lovely. So, David, I'm going to tell you what it would be. So, it would be, so if it's like, um, okay, um, uh, what I'm going to say, um, what did I give you? Look at, um, uh, Luke, um, so in other words, like, puedo, subjunctive, subjuntivo, pueda. Okay, so, Luke est content que David puisse, yeah, um, uh, what did I give you? What did I even give you anyway? Uh, this is why I ask people to normally give it me. Bullshit, I can't find it. Um, ah, I can't even find what I gave you. This is why I normally ask. Luke is happy that I can speak French. So, Luke est content que je puisse. But to be honest with you, like in other languages, we often use the verb savoir to know for skills. This is a little file. This is a little Luke class within a class. The verb can. I can. Je peux. But we also use arriver and we also use savoir. So, for example, if you're like, oh, shit, I can't open the bottle of cider. Je n'arrive pas. I'm not able to. Yeah, no, you go out. Yeah, like in, in Spanish. Okay. Um, or I can speak Spanish. Yeah. Je sais parler uh, l'espagnol. Okay. Um, so, in other words, um, you, can, you can use the verb savoir and you can use the verb pouvoir, but you can use the verb arriver. So, Luke is happy that I can speak French. Luke est content que je... I either need the subjunctive of pouvoir, I either need the subjunctive of arriver, or I, no, because that would be right now. I need the subjunctive of pouvoir or savoir. So, Luke est content que je sache. Luke est content que je sache. So, skills that you can do, I can do this, je sais, even if it's physically. Yeah? Luke can do the splits. Luke sait faire un le grand écart. Luke has his split. Um, uh, lovely. Um, so, a side note then, can I remind you? So, I can't open the bottle. Je n'arrive pas à ouvrir. I wasn't able to do it. Je n'ai pas lot of. So, if you're meeting somebody, go slowly. Je ne suis pas arrivé à allumer l'ordinateur. Okay? Rather than je ne pouvais pas, je n'ai pas pu. All right? It's just one of those things. All right? So good, David. So I'd like you to, um, uh, what I want you to do, um, David, is I want you to spend some time watching any of my videos. Okay, pasha pasha un ratito. Okay, what, watching my videos. Press pause, okay, because you're clearly very intelligent. Press pause, look at my face, <laughs> cry, vomit, and then, uh, Copy what I'm saying. Get it in your mouth slowly. We just need you practicing coming up with this. You seem capable with grammar. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Eres muy capaz. La gramática para ti es fácil. Yeah. Gr grammar for you is easy. You just need to get your mouth used to saying this stuff. All right? So, David, I would like you to say something else for me. I'd like you to say, um, aujourd'hui. No, I'd like you to translate. Today, hoy, Luke has given me. Luke Merdado, uh, lots of advice, okay, uh, muchos consejos, okay, and therefore I am going to uh, try to do it, okay, uh, we tend to say I'm going to try to follow advice in English, seguir, but I'm not going to complicate things. Today, Luke has given me lots of advice, uh, and there, therefore, okay, I am going to try to do it. 
That's for David. I'd like that translated. Okay. Um, and then someone sent me a picture. David has got a the, the most perfect shaved head you can imagine. It is like the head is the most beautiful shape ever. Look at this. Perfect. Perfect head. A perfect head, probably full of lots of grammar. All right. David, encantado. Que placer. Okay. Lovely. Uh, uh, right. So we've, now we've got Gabe. Good. So, Gabe, you are really organized. You're très bien organisé, and you're going to do really well, really well. Remember to give your French to people. And, guys, this is a psychological thing. C'est quelque chose de psychologique. Psst, 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 psst. Come here. Got some gossip for you. Psychologique, okay? La psychologie, okay? Psychose, psy, okay? And the other word for tire is P N U E, like pneumatic, pneu, okay? So, you need a p. So, give me your voice, Gabe. Give me your voice. Give me your vibration. Luke, il a dit quelque chose de... Even if you come quickly. Alors, euh, Gabriel, j'ai quelque chose à te dire. Alors, moi, je vais te raconter quelque chose. Alors, hier, effectivement, moi, je parlais avec mon amie Suzy. Suzy, elle est belle, elle est magnifique. Effectivement, elle habite pas loin de chez moi. Mais tu vois, il y a certaines choses qui... Voilà, you know. Give me your voice. So, go quickly. Salut, comment tu vas? Give me your voice. So that means use the vibration, but give me the air forward. Okay? Not... Alors, moi, je vais te raconter. Yeah, don't be like a little squirrel. So, you're imitating the French voice very well. To me, bien. But it comes from here. It's not just a question of closing your mouth. Yeah, c'est pas simplement une question de, de fermer le bec, <laughs> fermer la bouche. Okay? Ça vient juste que, oui, je voudrais. Oui, alors moi, je voudrais vous parler. Yeah, give me the, the air that's coming from here, all right? Good. Let's listen to what you said. Before speaking to them, it's important that we show them them. Them, them. It's important that we show them them. Lovely. Talking about photographs. I'm going to miss that. So I had... And I'm not mocking you, Gabriel, because you're going to be brilliant. And I really strongly recommend... I never, ever, ever play with anybody's money. I know everybody's on a budget. But I really strongly recommend... Half an hour, if you can't afford an hour, that you do half an hour with me and that we sort out this voice. Because every other fucking thing you're going to learn in your A-level is going to stick into your brain so much more. What do I keep saying? The same has happened with my cues here. La même chose a eu lieu. La même chose... Enfin, ça, effectivement, je ne peux, peux pas vous dire jusqu'à quel point c'est hyper efficace. I can't tell you how efficient it is. Once you've sorted the voice, you then remember the sentences that you're saying because you say them in one go. D'un seul coup. D'un seul coup. And then the grammar and the vocab just stick. It becomes like a song that you know. All right? But sort the voice out first. So for the love of God, allow me, Gabriel, to give you one lesson, all right? Half an hour if you can't afford it, okay? But really get in touch about that, really, because at the moment we're a little bit consonanty, okay? Um, and if we take the beginning of consonanty and we go with the end of consonant, we end up with cunt, which is not a good word. So fuck consonants. We want vowels, all right? Um, um, categorically, my standard hourly rate is 35 UK pounds for the moment. All right, and in the evening after 4.35, 30, it normally goes up to about 40 pounds, UK. But if there's someone up here from YouTube, I will honor for that one-off class, I, I will honor the 35 pounds, okay? I know there are cheaper people, but with all due respect, try one of my fucking classes and see what happens, all right? So, um, um, and I will then give you a prescription of what you need to do, all right? Um, uh, so it's before speaking to them, it's important that we show them them. So, important. so I'm hearing them. So here's a really good tip. Gabriel, if I gave you the word important, what are the, what's the word? Important. So step one, guys. Step one. Those of you that can't afford the class. And Gabriel, we won't just do this in the class. Do Use Dover Calais. Important. Find the vowel. Go long. Step one. Chateau. Maison. Jardin, um, pulo vert. Find it so that you can say it in the Dover Calais method. Just go across like this. Step two, say it quickly. Pulo vert, jardin. Yeah, don't practice going 
jardin. Because you're never going to say, j'aime bien votre jardin. If I said to you, Susie, I like your garden, you would honestly shit your pants. So what I need you to do is just practice the word, make it in your muscle, stick it in your muscle memory. Yeah. Um, um, you know, uh, essuie to wipe. Essuie. Then say it the short way. Step two, step three. Find the individual vowels. So if I gave you, um, what did I give you? What was that word? I've forgotten. Um, uh, okay, say it was écouté, all right? So go écouté. Then just do the vowels. E, u, a. Yeah? Don't think visual vowels. Don't think. Sorry to be London. Don't think. Do just so e, u, a. Then say those vowels quickly with no cons consonants. E, u, a. And it should be on one long sentence. E, u, a. So if I gave you, je suis content, je suis content, give me the vowels back on their own, then say that with just the vowels, then say je suis content, and add the consonants in a small way, je suis content, you don't need just sweet, okay, that's how to get it, and it's the vowels that you're going to communicate with, um, uh, is Elliot still here? Yeah, is he still here? It'd be great to hear his opinion on this. Yeah, you don't say, oui, bonjour, je voudrais parler parce que moi, yeah? Yeah, you communicate. Salut. Yeah, so if you were talking in English and it was very windy, hi, my really good mate, Alan. Alan, I will see you, mate, at the tube at four o'clock because it's really windy. That's how you make English, you know, smarter, brighter, clearer to people to hear. But in, Fran in French, you wouldn't do that. Mais je t'ai dit que je te verrais près du métro. Il fait du vent. Oui, oui, du métro. Yeah, you, come, you, you stress the vowels, all right? So that's what we need, Gabriel. Sorry to diversify, but that's the fucking important point. All of you, all right? Um, C'est important que... Is it subjunctive? Why, Gabriel? Because it's a neutral expression. Want... Now my list... Want, need, doubt, fear, neutral, impersonal? It's important. Yeah, c'est important. It's subjunctive, what comes next. However, c'est important quand so. If you're using show, montre would not show the subjunctive if you've used an on. C'est important qu'on les leur montre. C'est important que nous les leur montrions. If you're like, ooh, where did Luke get them to them? Which comes first? Show them, show them them. You need to know about the pronouns. So, guys, email me and uh, just say, what's the difference? Here's the rules. If you have one pronoun, it begins with an L. It goes at the end. If you have two pronouns and they begin with an L, the longer one comes second. He gives me. Il me donne. He gives me it. Il me le donne. Il me la donne. I give it. Je le donne. I give it to him. Je le lui donne. Je l'ai leur donne. Whatever. Okay, so the longer L word comes second. All right? Um so, um, c'est important que nous les leur donnions ou montrions. Or, what I was kind of wondering whether you'd sort of go with, it's important to give them them. C'est important de les leur donner. So, notice we can bypass a subjunctive by using a do. Um, as long as the person, as long as you're referring to... So, oui, c'est très important... So if I say it's important to speak French, it's important that you can speak French. C'est très important que tu saches parler euh, le français. Um, C'est important de pouvoir. If I use that, I'm not using you, but it kind of makes sense in the same way. A side note, lots of French people fuck this up. But the difference between parler français and parler le français, parler le français, moi je parle le français, is that parler le français just refers to the skill of being able to do it. Most of the time. Le parler français, alors Luc, il, Luc, il parle français avec sa maman. He speaks French with his mom. That would be, the, that's what he does. He speaks the language. But the ability to, it will often use the word le. So you might have noticed you can say, uh, parler français and parler le français. That's the difference. Good. Uh, Asian persuasion, uh, lovely. So, um, good. So that's all useful. Uh, so I'm just going to finish what I've, no, I do one more for everybody. One more for everybody. So, Gabriel, can you give me? Um, it's fantastic that I woke up this morning uh, before um, uh, 
get to the next step. I um bang. I call Luke. That'll do. One more from him. Um anybody else waiting for one more? Mike, oh, we've got Mike. Mike, a perfect translation. Je voudrais savoir si tu es prêt, du, apart from the word duty-free, which formally is duty-free, but you call it le du-free. We've linked the words in French. Le du-free. Okay? But people would understand the duty-free. Lovely. Michael used the word sentir without the reflexive. Brilliant. To smell. Sentir. Je me sens, I feel. If followed by an adjective or an adverb. Je me sens bien. Yeah, notice that there is a very good video, if I do say so myself, called um, The Difference Between Sentir, Ressentir, and Se Sentir. Mike, lovely. Yeah, um, lovely. Uh, good job. Um, great. Susie is not sure if the mic's working properly. Susie, I'm really sorry your mic didn't work, but I'll definitely wait for you. Or I'll give you a little callers at the end of the class if, if um, uh, that's a Wendy word, little callers, little, little, uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, have fun with language. Yeah, I mean, Wendy, that I talk about, it's never Tesco, Waitrose, Sainsbury's, um, I mean, she steals food at a bins, God bless her. But I mean, you know, like, it'll be Tesco's or, or, or Big T or, uh, you know, um, uh, she, she uses little fun words for, for, for proper nouns, which I think is quite fun. So have fun with your language, but just yeah, keep it changing, keep it modifying, but just, yeah. Um, so Gabe, I've got one more coming from Gabriel. Right. Uh, one from David. So, lovely. So your, bam, your grammar, your vocabulary, it's not bad, David. I just need to work on as I find today. Today, Luke has given me lots of advice. David, it is very brave when you come on here, and I understand this. You are with people who want to help you and do not feel I'm criticizing you. As I always say before I start the mental battle that is in my classes, which is trying to give everybody five classes in one hour, because you know that's how you've got to be. You've got to work quickly. French contains an adverb. A, an average sentence contains a conjugation or two, an adverb, a pronoun, uh, some compound form a bit of slang, an idiom. So you have to get people working, bum, 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 bum. You've got so many things to do. And then it just becomes natural. You learn one by one, all of those naturally. So don't think I am being mean or critical, all right? I want to help you. Luke has given me lots of advice. Luke m'a donné beaucoup de conseils. Okay, um, so you said, so not aujourd'hui, oh. Aujourd'hui, yeah. Uh, so you're a little bit like Gabe in that you like consonants. Enjoy the vowel. What's the vowels in aujourd'hui? Oh oui, yeah. Aujourd, like the jour, like the O U. Aujourd'hui. So aujourd'hui. So you say Luc m'a donné. Luc m'a donné. Luc m'a donné. What's the vowels? U A N E. Luc m'a donné. All right. Lots of, beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup de conseils. So David, you, you like speaking quickly and 
you know, that's great. By all means, I'm not trying to slow you down. Save me. Keep the mouth closed. Beaucoup de français. But when you go quickly in French, you do not alter your French. So, for example, some of you have noticed in English, the man has a dog and he is a postman. I am happy that uh, he is going to the party, you know, you know, whatever. The man is a dog and I'm, he's, I, he's a postman. I'm happy that he's going, you know. When you speak quickly, that becomes that. A becomes a. Uh, the becomes, sorry, um, that the becomes the. Yeah, postman, postman. Okay, English goes down, it goes down, it goes south when you speak. French, no, even if you're the most ghetto, like a I really like your trainers, you know, whatever, like it's the bowels are everything still. Yeah, and when people go, oh, it's so quick, it's so quick, it's so quick, I say it's not quick, it's just joined up. All right, it's just joined up. So focus on the vowels and your listening will go through the roof. So I'm basically telling you one trick that's going to make your speaking better and your listening better. Join it up, right? So Luc m'a donné beaucoup de conseils, beaucoup de conseils, right? Uh, next thing for you. I am going to do Gabby's idea, the lovely Gabby, uh, a listening and repeat series of podcasts. I'm going to be taking lots of social situations and I'm just going to be saying, this is the English for what we want. And then the French and you copy me. It might be an idea even for you, David, and then you practice both languages. So I'm going to try to do it. Je vais. So I am going, I don't need just three. You are a language like English, David, where you have got an auxiliary present tense. I am speaking gives you estoy hablando. Yeah, you've got a form with auxiliary. Italian, sto parlando. You, 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 other languages, no offense to French, have got more tenses in, you know, we haven't got I am speaking, we've just got I speak. Therefore, I am going, it's not je suis allant or anything, it's je vais. So I'm going to try, je vais essayer, correct verb, well done, je vais essayer de le faire. Because essayer uses de. Yeah, that's the only reason. SAA uses de, all right? Um, if it's I'm going to be able to do it, je vais pouvoir le faire. Yeah, voy a poder hacerlo, voy a poder hacerlo. You know, je vais, like in Spanish, some verbs like the preposition de. In French, some verbs like the preposition de, all right? Good boy. Um, uh, some Susie. That sounded fine, Susie. You said it was rubbish, but it's fine. Lovely. So Susie has Susie has just said, "Yeah, Susie a porté un bon bracelet or un beau bracelet." The linkage thing, Susie. Well done. Your linkage is lovely. Yeah, Susie a porté. So it's almost like the grammar goes out the window. Do we want Susie going? Hmm. Susie was wearing, Susie used to wear, Susie porte, or she wore, elle a porte, and that's just what we want. So, in other words, it suited her. Susie said, muscle memory, ça lui va, which is perfect French for the present tense. It suits her. It suited her. I would have gone, ça lui allait bien, ça lui allait. So, in the same sentence, Susie wore, a bracelet, it suited her. We can hear in English the same tense twice. But in French, one would be Susie a porté, and more so, more so, it's like she wore. And one would be, you know, description rather than action. So if someone said, just what was Susie wearing? Elle porté, she was wearing description. So she was wearing elle porté, yeah. But I'm talking about the action. So it will kind of work for both. But the point is, um, the she, that suited her, so, ça lui va bien, that suits her, ça lui allait bien. So, when you come up with a sentence, with a pronoun, then try and say it in different tenses. This is called the game. Okay? So, if I said, Susie likes to eat it. Yeah, let's just say um, uh, vegetable soup. Susie likes to eat it. 
Susie M, what a, or, or a pizza, or whatever. Susie M la mange. Susie likes to eat it. Susie M la mange. Or Susie a aimé. Last night, Susie liked. Susie a aimé. Susie aimera la mange. Susie aimera la mange. Susie aurait aimé la mange. Susie aura aimé la mange. Practice your sentence instinctively. Just think, can I say this in the other tenses? Do not move on. Don't find yourself a new sentence. Um, uh, she annoys me. Elle m'énerve. Elle m'énerve. She annoyed me. Choice? Is it one action or ongoing? Elle m'a énervé. Elle m'énerve. Elle m'avait énervé. Elle m'aura énervé. Elle m'aurait énervé. Okay. Um, please notice I'm stressing the auxiliary to help you find it. You don't stress the auxiliary. So good. There we go. Susie, your voice. I'm really liking what your voice is doing in French. Um, J'adore ce, uh, ce que tu fais avec la voix en ce moment. Um, Great. Uh, finished last comment of the day, and then we finished. It's fantastic that I woke up this morning. Before getting up, I called Luke. So you were like, c'est fantastique que je me sois. Did you hear what I did there, Lukey? Did you hear what I did? And I'm like, no. Say for me, I ate. J'ai mangé. Say for me. Say he ate. Il a mangé. It's fantastic he ate. Oui, c'est fantastique qu'il ait mangé. You, you, the stress on a subjunctive auxiliary needs to be identical to the stress on a non-subjunctive auxiliary. Yeah, good. Uh, c'est fantastique que je me sois... If it needs to be quick, it's quick. Oui, c'est fantastique que, que je me sois réveillé ce matin. Before getting up, I called Luke. Good, well done for saying me lever and not me leve. The verb is lever. The short form is je me lève. Right? Um, I called Luke. J'ai appelé Luke. Not appelé à Luke because appelé is direct. Téléphoner à quelqu'un, appelé quelqu'un. Bravo tout le monde. Well done for everybody that took part. If you found today's session useful, okay, let me give you some information. Uh, one second. Um, yeah, if you found the session useful, nobody is under any obligation, whether you are in the session or whether you are listening to the session, um, this helps me. It helps me spend more of my time doing videos for you guys rather than just teaching. This is copy. Uh, copy is a website where you can treat me to a copy, okay? Nobody is under any obligation. I am happy to help anybody who is broke as fuck. I am. But if you are in a position where you would normally be paying for downloads and you'd be paying for things that you're learning, three quid for an hour and 20 minutes of my time, I think is nothing. I don't think that's much, all right? Nobody is under any obligation, and can I stress that, all right? But it would help. Um, equally, uh, what was I going to say? Can I remind you to email me if you are interested in the podcast, which cover a vast amount of what we've done today. It's not like the videos. It's not long and explaining loads of stuff. It's explaining everything neatly in four minutes, and then you have a, a matching four-minute file with the uh, load of examples. Logiclanguagelearning at gmail.com. Can I stress, I know it's a bit complicated for some people, WhatsApp me, A, to say hi, or just to say how much you like the channel. That's absolutely fine. By all means, WhatsApp me. WhatsApp me um, any sort of questions or anything like that at all, or to ask about lessons. Can you email me if it's on the video? I shall explain to you why. Je vous expliquerai pourquoi. You can't, please, if you're listening YouTube in a big brother way, can you change it? You can't search a term on a, a um, tablet or a phone. So if I want to go onto my video videos and find you the appropriate video, I need to do it off the, iPad, off the laptop. So that's then a pisser to keep getting your contact details from WhatsApp. So if you want a video recommending, can you email me? If you want to say anything else or book anything else, send me a little WhatsApp. But as my poor friend Adrian discovered this week, sometimes I can miss people. Poor bastard. Lovely guy, lovely kid. <laughs> I missed his class because of Google calendars. No conversation about Google calendars, but you do not sync very nicely, Mr. Google Calendar, between two events, between two uh, um What's the word of mouth? Um, two, uh, two things, what do you call them? A tablet and a phone, two devices. Um, yeah, so in other words, if you don't get a contact back from me on WhatsApp, just give me a little missed call. Give me a little missed call, all right? 
Well then, guys, I will speak to you later. Loads of, loads of, loads of love. Some people have just gone the minute we stopped teaching. Aucune education. No manners, no manners. Um, all right, then, love you loads, and thank you for your support. Uh, speak to you soon. Yeah.